Okay, everyone, this is Sarah Gurton, producer of the Distraction Podcast. You know, when we launched this podcast five years ago, we lived in a different world. The pandemic has affected our physical, mental, and emotional health, and for many of us, has caused us to re-examine our priorities. So that's why we've decided to broaden the focus of Distraction, to address the new world that we find ourselves living in every day. Of course, you'll still hear great classic episodes from time to time, and we will still continue to support this awesome community that we've built over the past five years as we focus on these critical issues of today. We are super excited to bring you fresh voices and new perspectives, and we're kicking off season six with our very first guest host, CNN anchor Allison Camerata. She has a lot of awesome guests lined up and some great episodes planned, and we think you're gonna love her. So stay tuned for our sixth season starting soon. Hello, this is Dr. Ned Hallowell coming to you with a mini episode of Distraction. Just last week, we were all saddened by the suicides of Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain, two people who seem to have it all in life, and not only have it all, who seem to be happy and really quite loved by the general public, one in the field of fashion, the other in the field of uh, food, and um, they seem to be, you know, full of life and and joy, but obviously they they weren't entirely. And, uh, you know, we were all scratching our heads wondering why. Well... For me, uh, two explanations come to mind, and uh, both of them I've been talking about for a long time, and the numbers really bear out one of my theories, because uh, suicide rates have been increasing in almost every state from 1999 through 2016. This was studied with nearly 45,000 people taking their own lives in 2016 alone, according to a report released Thursday. Well, this is coincident with what I uh, call an epidemic of disconnection. I think we began to disconnect interpersonally, and I cite the beginning of that epidemic of disconnection with Columbine, which happened in 1999. When Columbine happened, we were all stunned and shocked that someone would go to school and shoot other students. Well, now, of course, it happens so often that it almost doesn't make the news. It's become routine. And it is, to me, emblematic, symbolic of this epidemic of disconnection. And as as the the defining technology of our time is, is the electronic connection that, that uh, we're all joined together by, at the same time that we've been connecting electronically, we've been disconnecting interpersonally. And we may not feel it second to second, but to me, these, uh, these school shootings and this increase in suicide are both uh, absolutely symptomatic of it. The, the times uh, just are not as cohesive, as together, as they ought to be. And two extreme statistics, uh, violent murders committed by random people who have no reason to kill other people, and suicides committed by people who seem for all the world to have no reason to kill themselves. Both of these extreme measures, uh, to me, speak of this epidemic of disconnection, which in terms of what it ought to lead us to do is, is simply to take very seriously connecting in our own lives, connecting with our family, with our friends, Uh, connecting with the groups that matter to us, whatever those groups might happen to be, for whatever meetings, whatever clubs, whatever athletic events, whatever, 
being a part of something larger, not just hiding in your home in front of your computer screen, not just burying your head into your iPhone as you walk down the street, making eye contact, smiling, trying to create the force field of positive energy that you do when you connect. We need what I call the other vitamin C. We need it desperately, vitamin connect. I tell my patients now routinely, get a dog. There's no better connector in the world than a dog. Get a dog, guaranteed you'll feel happier. You really will. It'll also give you an excuse to get outside and get some exercise and meet other people. Dogs and babies are great connectors. Uh, Do it. I mean, you know, uh, uh, if, if we started doing that, if we started connecting again, I promise you, Suicide rates would go down, and so would school shootings. The other explanation I cite is the stigma that surrounds mental illness of all kind. And I I, am particularly prone to comment on this because my new book just came out this week because I come from a crazy family, and it's my, my own memoir, my own my own bearing of myself, you know, and talking about the craziness in my family. And, and I do it in a, in a humorous way, in a very loving way. But this memoir, unlike anything I've written before, is also my way of, of thumbing my nose at stigma, of saying, no, I'm not going to hide. I'm going to trumpet it from the rooftops. I'm going to write a book that anyone can read about, about, yes, the craziness that I grew up with. But no, I'm not, I'm not going to hide that. I'm not going to sweep that under the rug. I'm not going to pretend it wasn't there. It was absolutely there. These were brilliant, interesting, fascinating, crazy people. And I, I'm pretty sure those two people who took their own lives also weren't getting the help they needed because of the shame and stigma that comes along with so-called mental illnesses. We need to blow apart this stigma. We need to blow it up. We need to call it for the nonsense, for the rank hypocrisy that it is almost every family in this country is touched by one kind of mental illness or another. Let's get rid of the shame and stigma so we can all be who we are. Let's be real. Let's be human, real, messy humans. Let's not be hoity-toity phonies. Let's not drive people into hiding so that they snap and kill themselves or kill someone else. Let's not do that to one another and force people into into terrible constrictions of shame. Let's not do that. Let's blow up the horrible forces of shame and stigma and let people be real in all the messiness and humor of of the human comedy. Let's not turn it into the human tragedy. Please join me in laughing and celebrating human life in all its dimensions, which includes craziness and includes laughter. If you or anyone you know is thinking about suicide, there is a National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-TALK. 1-800-273-8255. And there is also a suicidepreventionlifeline.org, a website, suicidepreventionlifeline.org. And an online chat is available there. 24-7, suicidepreventionlifeline.org. And really, the, the, the trick is to stay alive through your feelings of suicide because they will pass. We know this. They will pass. That's why we hospitalize people when they're suicidal, because the feelings do pass. So if you can simply keep yourself alive through a hotline, through talking to a friend, uh, you save your own life, and uh, and that's why these lifelines are are so very very important. Well, this is Dr. Ned Hallowell with the mini episode of Distraction, wishing you all a wonderful day. <laughs>